What is up, Retro Maniacs? Welcome to the Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name is Mike, and I have Mike's Retro Trading Cards. And I'm joined by two men that have been selling a lot of cards lately because they're getting out of cards and putting all their money into cryptocurrency. They are, of <laughs> course, Joe Day and E.P. Eric Pahalik. How you doing, guys? Neither of us are the sports card dad. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's well, a, that's EP was thing, talking about this yeah. earlier. Yeah. I thought that see was why he was selling all those cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 banging. Your web, we're your starting my, my, NFT, my, NFT, my NFT portfolio is. Did out, Joe not get world. the memo about the new NFT line that we're putting? Hold out? on, let me like, screen cap some NFTs right now so I have them all as well. <laughs> yeah, so, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it going, guys? Long time to see. It's been a long time. I. uh I worked uh, this weekend. We're uh, what? recording. We're recording. I'm pulling the curtain back. We're recording later than normal. So I'm definitely going to have a, an alcoholic beverage. Let me just crack one open. It's actually a Trogues fruit seltzer because it's the only thing I had that was under 9% alcohol. <laughs> and uh, I prefer not to get blitzed today. So, yeah. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's fruit punch seltzer. We'll see wow. how this goes. Hopefully better than the Dunkin' Donuts was last week. I'll tell you okay. that. Pretty low bar you set there last week, though. It's not bad. Not bad. It's drinkable. Okay. It's drinkable. Okay. <laughs> is there anything that is not drinkable to Joe Day? Uh, yeah. The rest of that Dunkin' Donut coffee. If oh, you didn't drink it? it? Oh, wow. I know. I drank that one can because it's open. You have oh, okay. to. If anyone wants the rest of that 12-pack, just swing on by the house over here, and I'll drop I'll it leave it on the car. porch. Yeah, I'll leave, it, I'll leave it out by the mailbox. Just grab it. Oh, uh, terrible. Well, I stopped at the grocery store yesterday and um, found that they have beer on clearance. Oh. Uh, with, it's like seasonal stuff. And mm -hmm. so this yeah. Harpoon Rec League, Hazy Locale, Hazy IPA, eleven dollars and fifty cents for a twelve pack. So wow. less Happy than a buck of beer in twenty twenty four. Let's give this. Let's give this little. little Let me know how that is. EP. You yep. got it out of the dollar beer box. <laughs> yep, yep. Dollar beer box. <laughs> I shop, shop in dollar boxes all the time, baby. It smells like IPA. Has a taste. Tastes like IPA. It tastes like it tastes like IPA. A little little watered down, of course, but for a for a less dollar. Than a Less than a dollar for a can of beer. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Wow. How about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just now I'm picturing EP with a three thousand count box with like beers instead of cards. <laughs> I, I know that's what I was like, thinking too. With a with a chair and a table and a <laughs> yeah. card with the beers now. Oh, there's like, one. <laughs> this one out. I'll take this one. <laughs> I'd be in the dollar beer box all day if I that was it's a brilliant they idea. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rob, Rob wants me to go to um a Pittsburgh Riverhounds game, which is the local M uh, like the what minor league soccer, minor league. whatever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Well, there's three dates that I'd like to go. And he goes, But we're gonna end up going on this one. I go, Why this one? He goes, It's dollar beer night. It's the only way I'm gonna get you to go to one of those games. I go, Yeah, you're actually 100 percent accurate. That's the only way I'm going to a Riverhound soccer game. So yeah, there it is. Dollar beer. Right. EP, I'll text you the details. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, dollar beer soccer night. Um, what uh, how many how many beers are you drinking? What's your over under on number of beers drank? Uh, well, I'll tell you this: more than the goals scored, that I can guarantee. <laughs> um, probably more than the Steelers score. I don't know, ten and a half. What, what's? I'll, I'll just give them a twenty and say, just, just let me know when you run keep out. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dollar beer over. night. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Sounds like it's custom made for Joe Day. How about that? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to do the channel lineup right now. I'm not going to do it in the middle of the show this week like I did last week. <laughs> totally on purpose. Uh, so, you know, Wednesday, we have the Wednesday show coming up. We have a fun one. We're going to kind of rate how much things in the hobby piss us off. So that'll be fun. You know, people like those kind of videos. And Thursday, I still don't know if I'm going to have another video. So if not, I'll probably be dropping another one of Joe's Marvel rips. <laughs> so, Friday, we have three cards you need for your retro PC, and we have three fantastic choices yeah. coming up. I, I know we haven't recorded it yet, but we'll be there Friday <laughs> morning with three great cards for you. Right. Saturday, EP swears to me that he has a couple more episodes of his already show recorded. already recorded. 
So should be there Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. The continuing saga, part three right. of Joe Day's. Am I crazy for selling my Tom Brady PC? What? What am yeah. I doing? So, well, and I have to say, episode two dropped uh, yesterday, yesterday, Sunday, mm -hmm. and um, and that's why my camera angle is kind of weird because I don't want to spoil the viewers. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. I may have gotten one of the cards from episode two already. I love to display my cards, okay? My favorite place to display is my favorite place to talk about cards, which is with my two best friends. So as soon as I got it, I had to pull the card out of the box. I couldn't <laughs> leave it down in the den, put it in a box, hide it away. I had to put it with my favorite place to be with you two, my two best friends. So it is here. And that is why my camera is turned. And maybe on Friday, I'll figure out how to do the blur behind me for the three cards you need your retro PC. That maybe I'll good. figure it out by then. But for now, so this is the angle probably for the next few weeks until episode five, which I believe will be the, <laughs> the final episode of this little journey. But uh, yeah, it's up here. It's up here. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you what it is, but it is up here. So and I, have, I have two comments. One, we literally had like a half hour discussion with Joe about, you know, you didn't need to put it on the shelf behind you <laughs> when we were going to be shooting videos. And number two, if you wouldn't have said anything, nobody would have noticed anyway, because you can't really see anything behind us. No, I might feel real awkward. Like I'm like, like sitting like this. And <laughs> yeah, like, like, well, I'm here and you're like <laughs> way up here. It's I a know. Little, little weird. And I'm like, see, I'm so... way too much of your horizontal strength. <laughs> right. Which also not a great thing for a fat <laughs> guy. And the three of us all know that. <laughs> but, but yeah, so oh. yeah, that's, uh, that's going to happen here in the next couple of weeks. We'll have episode five out and I can finally lift the screen back a little bit, but you're right. People probably couldn't unless they were really eagle eyed, see what's behind me, but it's, it's fairly obvious. So I okay. don't want to give it away. EP, what is new and exciting? I mean, that's, that's asking a lot. There's nothing terribly exciting, but there are some new things. Like I did go to uh, the the card our local card shop um, this on Friday. I was going to stop in, just going to tell the guy who works there. I can't go to the uh, the card the card show next weekend. I, I have to work. Is there was next, next weekend. weekend already. Yeah, next weekend. Yep. yep. Oh wow. Yep. So Amy's away too. I'm oh, going to be spending oh, money. <laughs> well, Mike, Mike is going to be <laughs> uh -oh. unsupervised. And I'm going to be there. Uh -oh. He's not even going to be show. there. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm so, sorry. That's that's right. No problem. But yeah, so I stopped in. I was just going to stop in to tell, let, you know, let them know I can't go. And then if they had any top series one, I was going to get a box of a blaster or something like that. I was hoping they had blasters. They didn't have any series one. I ended up being there an hour just talking to Bill about setting up at, at shows and talking about us coming in there and get, getting cards, that sort of stuff. It just it was a fun conversation. I've known him uh, uh, for for a long time, like for 20 years, maybe maybe, maybe more than that. He was the, the Danville basketball coach, uh, Danville boys basketball coach when I was like a sports reporter at the paper. Mm -hmm. And so both of his kids played sports or were involved in sports and that sort of stuff. And so like, I've known him for a long time. So just, just chatting about cards and about the, the hobby and stuff. And it was just a really fun, fun conversation. Like we would have at, you know, at my Mike's shop back in the day. So uh, just a re really cool moment. I wanted to make sure I shared that. And I was talking about my stack sale and about how, you know, I'm doing NBA stack sale. I did it Friday, Saturday and, and, and Sunday. And uh, my, my cards are actually, this is going to, going to post live on, on Monday morning. So they're going to be, yeah, it is the, Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're yeah, recording we're doing, it we're doing live right Monday now. Morning, so yeah, cards will be, definitely. cards will be available once like, like midnight, midnight tonight. So midnight Tuesday. So at 12 AM Tuesday. So if, uh, if anybody wants to, to go in there and see what's, what is left to unclaimed, um, is people have claimed a lot of stuff so far, but, um, um, it, it's at EPC money. Do we so have hoodie money? Yeah. We're close to hoodie money. We're, we're very close. to hoodie oh, money. Oh, <laughs> Go and claim. We need those hoodies. <laughs> so, but been a fun week. Yeah. yeah. Bill used to actually come into my shop every now and then too. So he was oh, really? a yeah. former customer. Yeah. When his son was just really little too. <laughs> Funny. Oh, so yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do I have anything I want to talk about? Uh, no, nothing. Oh, I did have one little thing. Yeah. I talked last week a little bit about how I bought from Whatnot, right? Really cool. Whatnot, I got, 
<laughs> yeah, whatnot. <laughs> you know, I'm a huge whatnot supporter here. I think it's a channel sponsor or something. No, I'm that's because you don't guy. have the hat. Different yet. guy, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got a bunch of my cards in this week. Um, really cool. I got all this basketball cards from from Caleb, you know, got this stuff right out to me, came greatly packaged. You know, the Paul Heyman cards and whatnot I got from the one other breaker that I always retweet his breaks and stuff on Twitter. I've gotten to know him on there. I got all that stuff. And, you know, I told you I got a, into a Leaf wrestling break, right? Just one, the Leaf metal wrestling. Um, I got my card from that, too. Well, I didn't get my card. <laughs> I got the card that was actually the last pick <laughs> in the draft. Like, now there were seven people that picked cards. I was pick four. I, I I didn't pick the MJF card. I picked the Hulk Hogan card out of five, and I did not get the Hulk Hogan card. I got the last pick card. And, the, and like, the weird part was the seller, like, still doesn't really kind of believe that he could have made that mistake because he, like, gets a little post-it and puts it on it and puts it on the card. I'm like, yeah, but go watch the video. It's at 29 minutes if you go. You hear the fourth pick, you say Mike's retro, and you say the Hulk Hogan. I said, you don't write the thing out or put the sticker on it on camera, but you clearly announced which one I picked, and that's not the card. So, you know, after letting him know and then not hearing from him for two days after I let him know and sent him a picture, like I, I took a picture of the video when he was holding that card up, and he's supposedly going to be buying me one on ebay the same one there are only five of them the odds of him actually getting me the card that i actually had in the break we're gonna say is like pretty much zero right it's yeah the next step will be it not being the right card right are we in agreement with that but oh yeah this worked out exactly as we all predicted so okay. i'm glad i'm glad it went to plan so yeah I mean, that's what I get for breaking with somebody that I don't know on whatnot. So yeah. there you go. Um, Cautionary well, tale that is. Whatnot. We will keep people updated in coming episodes about whether I get any card or whether or not I get the, like, kind of feel like the right call is to say, oh, sorry, and refund the money that you yes, got yeah. for that slot in the break. But that has not been an option. Keep the MJF card and here's your money for buying into the break. Yeah. I, I wonder to myself, like, how many total cards were there in this break? It was like you said, it was like 20 or seven. Something. Seven total cards. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand how, as a seller, as a, we, we all sell stuff for ourselves, if you're doing a break for seven cars, you can get them wrong. Like, how do you mm -hmm. get two of them wrong? Like, I just, I mean, I realize mistakes happen, but to get get them wrong, but then not make, not that just to do an immediate refund. Like that, that to me just seems right. Like a he's really not crazy breaking thing. Don Russ where every card ships and there's 32 teams, right? <laughs> right like, yeah, right. it's yeah. seven cards. Yeah. yeah. Like, I could understand if he like screwed up the two MJF cards and you say there was like two MJF cards in there's that break. Auto sure. Auto. Yep. Auto, yeah. I could yep. uh, kind of understand screwing that up. Or you had a Hogan and wasn't there a Hogan one of one? As well, no, that was was right. oh, was there was no okay. other Hogan in it. I'm there wasn't. Yeah, like, so I could understand screwed up the MJF, not. You, you and the MJF. That's just and you know, I didn't get the rock one on one. My screw up was getting the last pick in right. that draft, the least valuable card that yeah. nobody wanted in the last place. Per right. person had to it take, feels like so. so whatnot. Like, so <laughs> it's like, the, story like that is so whatnot. the issue I had though is like, like the tone of just like I, I can't believe that happened though because I put these stickers on, but there's freaking video there. Like right. I would be going to the video right away to double yes. check to see what happened to me. Like, oh, yeah. and then admit it immediately. And, like he clearly exactly. has never watched yeah. the right. video. Like, yep. why? Why did you not watch the video of the break when you, I told you there was a mistake? Like, I would. That would be the first thing I do to make sure the person telling me that was actually right. telling me the truth. Right? <laughs> it's right there on the video. And if he just comes out and says, oh, shit, man, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. I'll make it right. Don't worry about it. Like, to question you, I think, is more egregious than the screw up. It's the not that he happened. was really questioning me. He didn't question me. That's not really the accurate portrayal. But, like, couldn't believe he made 
a mistake because he put sticky things on it. Like it was more, well, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but I don't know how I did this because I have this mm. way that I do it. Well, because you wrote down and put my sticker on the wrong card. Like it's pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rocket science. Pretty easy to happens. talk this out. I mean, yeah. we can figure this out together. I also feel like even like even if like I don't know how many people that he has working for him or whatever, but I feel like for something like that, again, it's only seven cards. Like you double check all those before you send them out. Like you even like watch the video. Like I don't like how yeah. it just seems really like I would be way more careful with something like that in my opinion. I sell two or three three dollar cards on eBay. I quadruple check them before I exactly. put them into yeah. Yeah. into the envelope, and I'll even when I put them in the envelope, I'll even open up the envelope and look down and make sure it's the right one tape yep. to the card yep. and then you know yeah. like i'm but i'm super paranoid but that's how you should be if you're going to sell cards especially on a platform where the whole thing is breaking cards and sending them to people i, I really don't and you it. have video evidence you have video to go back to, to oh. double check yourself you know yeah. all right well that's my what what not update and Maybe we'll have another update next week, making this a series on here. A like, series? Can't, can't yeah. wait. Can't wait for episode three. Do this all on short. <laughs> hey, so I have a quick little rant as well, Mike. Okay. Okay. And I'm like gonna rant, rant about I, I'm gonna rant about PSA and a little bit about eBay here, real quick. Okay. okay. So if you guys remember way back in the day when I cracked open that Tom Brady BGS9. I remember that Pro rookie card. EP, you watch that video yet? Cool. I got, I got I got goosebumps right now. I can't. I can't do it. You had so, no idea what you were doing. No idea what I was doing. <laughs> Took a shot at it. Yeah. Didn't damage the card. Knock on wood. <laughs> sent it off. Got it. Uh, PSA nine. Sent it back to me. Beautiful card. And it was just the slab. There was um, bubble wrap around it, and they just put it in a box. Sent it off to me. I after you know I wasn't in the back in the hobby that long. I was asking people, well, how do you protect your, your slabs? And they said, oh, try these perfect fit sleeves. They're great. Okay. Put that card perfect fit and it, it perfectly fit. Great. I then, and I might've told you guys this as it happened. I then started to notice that there were all these like mini scratches on the surface of the slab. And I'm like, and almost like, it's weird to describe, but almost like it looked like crop circles, like a weird design that was like on the slab. And I'm like, this did not, this slab did not look like this before I put this perfect fit sleeve on. So I ended up selling the card anyway. It was too expensive of a card for me to have at that point in my collection. So I ended up selling it regardless. So now fast forward about a year later when I bought the Brady SPX rookie, I had sent it off to... Um, I bought it on eBay, went through the authentication process. They sent it back to me. It was in the old school PSA label, like old, old school, like mm -hmm. 2005 kind of no hologram or anything. So I had it reholdered. I got a good deal on it because of that. Probably I got it reholdered. They sent it back. And now PSA actually uses the perfect fit sleeves with the PSA <laughs> logo on the bottom. You've probably seen. Mm -hmm. I saw, as soon as I took it out, I saw, I'm like, son of a bitch. I tore it out of there quick, put it in the slab mag. Cause if I display graded cards, I put them in slab mags or I just leave them, you know, un unprotected because of my experience with this. At first I thought this is just my OCD going crazy. No, there's, there's no real thing here. It's just me, you know, seeing this and not no. noticing. Right. No. Well, wrong. It was actually not just me. <laughs> um, EPU and I watched little victories, right? He uh, was, he did a whole video on this right after I got in the SPX back from PSA about these perfect fit sleeves causing scratches and, and weird little patterns on the slabs. And he showed like 30 different slabs. Now he cleaned his off with the, was it Mayers or Myers or whatever, like the um, scratch cleaner that people use on their cars. And some people use like um, the polish for the uh, their watches, the glass on their watches. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel comfortable doing that anymore. I'm just so worried it's going to somehow get to the card. And, you know, <laughs> I don't want to take that chance. So I just, whatever, I deal with it. I get a card from eBay through eBay authentication, goes to PSA to get authenticated. And they're still using those perfect fit sleeves. Card, mm -hmm. all sorts of the, the scratches. So here's my, if anyone from PSA is watching this, Stop using those goddamn things. 
<laughs> I know, I know that we're supposed to be buying the card, not the slab. We preach that all the time. Buy the card, not the label. Buy the card, not the slab. But when you're spending a lot of money on a card and you display your cards and these sleeves cause the display to not look very nice, just stop using them. You don't have to do it. So I'm probably going to take these to the national because I don't trust mailing them back. I'm probably going to take these cards to the national and have them re-slap there and say to the person taking them, do not put them in these sleeves. And if you think <laughs> if it's just me and just little victories got like bad batches or something, I guarantee you, I'm going to break everyone's heart out there today on this Monday morning, this beautiful Monday morning. Uh -oh. <laughs> if you're using those perfect fit sleeves and haven't really looked, go look, it's going to ruin your day. It makes the slabs look terrible and I, I just noticed it again. It's like I, EPA was asking me about like certain OCD habits that I have. I can put like I put it aside with the SPX. I'm like, you know what? I didn't do anything. This is PSA screw up. And I just put it out of my mind. Then it just gets re-triggered again as I get another card <laughs> from PSA. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's just so effing frustrating that they do that. <laughs> They're not smart enough to see that these sleeves ruin their slab so end of rant i apologize i had to get that out though it's been pissing me off for a week since i got this card that you're not allowed to see yet it's just that's it all right i'm you, done sorry you would you would <laughs> think that if if more cust if customers were complaining about it they would stop that practice would, right and like, maybe no one has complained maybe right. no one has complained that's a problem but i will say you know we do talk about buying the card not the slab how many buyers mike have you had say to you I don't want that card if there's a scratch on the slab. Yeah. You've had that I've happen had a to couple, a few yeah. times. I had somebody or people with want the refunds. cards I sold, yeah. Yeah, so like maybe we feel that way. You shouldn't care about the slab. I mean, I display mine. If I'm not going to display it, I put it into one of those Ultra Pro because they're like soft plastic. Those perfect yeah, fits nice. are like hard plastic. It's like putting, it's like rubbing hard plastic against hard plastic. So if I display them, I put them, you know, put them in the slab mags. But if I'm storing them, I put them in Ultra Pros. It's just ridiculous. Even uh, I use Ultra Pros too, and like even when I put them in Ultra Pro, I make and sure that. to like I make sure make sure to like hold the the card like this, and I I'm very careful when I put it on because I don't want to get any scratches on the the, the front yeah. of it either. So but yeah, yeah. And you'll even get returns are... and requests for refunds sometimes. For I haven't had any of that, any of that yet myself, but yeah, I know yeah. I know it's a real thing for a lot of people. Well, you know, I know one company that doesn't scratch your cards, Promold. They don't. And Joe, I think you have a little giveaway that I we do. need to announce today, right? I was going to make a similar transition, but I'm glad you did, Mike. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional. You are the professional. So, and this actually made me think of that as well, because someone said, oh, they would look good if you put them in a perfect fit mm -hmm. as well. I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing it. So if you win these, whoever wins these, if you put them in perfect fit, I will hunt you down. <laughs> I will take them down. But no, so joking aside, we've got the 180, we've got the 155, we've got a 75, we've got a 55, and then I have bags of um, the easy fit sleeves for all the different sizes. Given two packs of these away, ironically, I use the perfect fit for team bags and to put those easy uh, insert sleeves in. So they did not get wasted, but Yes, two of them. Mike, bring up the wheel. Okay. Let's give it EP, away. do you have do you have the die handy? I do. I do. All right. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna hit the shuffle here, right? See that? Yep. And yep. however number, whatever number comes up, let me know, and I will hit all right. The shuffle. It's a twenty sided die, so I'm gonna roll. Okay. It. <laughs> it's a one. One. No. Okay. I would. What are the odds? <laughs> Dude, there we go. Nope. We got to stick with it. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Shuffle in one time. <laughs> Who? Are we ready to go here? Yep. yep. Two winners. <sighs> and here we go. The first winner will be Paul. Paul. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Good job, Paul. Look at that. Look at Very excited. And yeah, I'm going to hit the remove excited. because last time we did a giveaway. <laughs> right, Alrighty, Pete, roll that. that die again. <laughs> 11. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And the winner will be. I'm nervous. 
Is it going to be, am I on here? Woo! NorCal <laughs> Cardboard. There you go. Very, very cool. Okay, Mike, uh, can you drop the email somewhere that they can email their addresses? And yes, I'll I... send them out this week. All right. I will put the email in the description. It's just retrocardchat at gmail.com. But go. make sure if you were one of the two winners here, shoot us an email so we can get your info and get these packs out to you. But yeah, I will try to remember to put it in the description. You know, so. <laughs> um, I, I do want to also say one more thing. So uh, my favorite suggestion for something to put in these pro molds was by Brandon Ryan 3885. He had a cello pack that he was going to try and put in 180 point. Mm. Brandon, if you're watching this, send your information as well. I'm going to send you a couple of things out because that was my favorite pick of something to try and put in a pro mold. So wow, a little bonus, bonus winner. Wow. Bonus winner. <laughs> so Brandon, uh, send, us the, send us your info as well. EP, did you yes. get yours yet? now you know I I'll, see you guys in a, I'll see you guys in a few weeks so don't ruin any surprises that may or may not be coming your way i don't know where's the car just sitting here and i'm so worried about it <laughs> <laughs> but thanks All everyone right. for participating yes. it was a lot of fun to hear the cards that you were going to use the, for the pro molds that was a lot of fun and it was not paid for by not pro mold for that ep all. or i know of i don't know if joe <laughs> got any money for this or not but if he did he's not sure <laughs> all right let's get into it this week uh it's gonna be a little different this week we're talking a little bit about a hockey player and a hockey card i don't know if you guys heard but there's a rookie his name is, let me look at this up, Connor <laughs> Bedard. He is a rookie for the Chicago Blackhawks. And apparently his young gun rookie card out of upper deck came out this week. This is Connor Bedard mania. This like <laughs> things are going crazy. Like the hobby, the hottest card in the hobby right now is a hockey card. Yeah of a 18 year old kid like this is <laughs> yeah. crazy but he's playing very well apparently, he, apparently he, i mean playing he's not very, playing very well. wayne grisky level well but you know i digress. Yeah. yeah yeah uh but yeah um the cards i i wanted to talk a little bit about this they they were selling for like a thousand dollars almost base like cards. upwards of a thousand dollars for right. the base rookie card out of that and now within a couple days time they're selling for 500 and under <laughs> So very quickly, you know, we talk about it all the time. Don't don't be in a rush to pick this stuff up. There seems like there's a lot more of them out there than people kind of wanted to feel like there are. But starting at like it's lost half its value in the first like four days that it's been released, which I mean, kind of normal for a hobby, but like still kind of mind blowing in a way, isn't it? Is this U.S. dollars or Canadian? I'm not. I think it's U.S. Right. Yeah. U.S. And is he related to Connor McDavid? I don't know how it works. I they're think not named so. Nope. Yeah. Not all hockey players no, are related. Not, no, but I they're named. Both they're, both, they're both Connor, though. Yeah. And oh, they're both Mario, Mario Lemieux's son. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. why I thought. Yeah. <laughs> who is who is uh, Wayne Gretzky's son? So, I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought he no, was his is, brother. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this, this is not shocking. We say it all the time. Don't buy into FOMO. It's very, very hard, though. Everyone thinks, if I don't buy this one right now, I'm never going to be able to get this card. And that's not how it is. There's always going to be some. Remember, this is the company, Upper Deck, that just mailed out 89 Griffies. So <laughs> I'm sure that these Connor Bedards are not like one per case. Let's just calm down a little bit. And I still probably wouldn't buy now at $500. Wait a few more weeks. You'll probably get it for $200, $250 in a couple more weeks. Wait until the off season. It's not shocking to us, but I, I FOMO is real. I we all get it. It is very, very real. So just try and just bite your tongue, hold off, wait until hockey's over for the season. Unless he wins, like randomly wins MVP or the Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup, which I don't uh, think is well, the cards. The right? Blackhawks have already officially been eliminated. Okay, me. just wait then. Wait until <laughs> the playoffs, maybe at that at that yeah. point. Wait till he's out of sight, out of mind. 
for a couple of weeks and you'll be able to get this card. I bet for under 250 bucks. I, I, Joe, I'm going to just push back on just a little bit. I really think that um, maybe they are one per case, but it's also upper deck. They seem to be running too. like a little more than one per case from right, what right. I've seen like yeah. dealers. Somebody had a, I forget how many cases they opened in it. Yes. It that, probably like one and a quarter to one and a half per case. Okay. Right. So, yeah. yeah. That, 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 that thing, they only have so many young guns per, per box, but they have multiple boxes per case. And that, so the, the odds are, you know, it's probably like one to two ish per, per case, but also it's upper deck flagship and They're they are charging a, a ridiculous amount of money for it. And I feel like they probably printed a crap ton of, yeah. it. Mm-hmm. like there's probably and the, the amount of people opening it, the excitement o- over it, even at that price, is like, like like you said, Mike. The person opened multiple cases. Like the excitement is just off the charts, and uh, so I feel like that that's probably explains why there are so many out there, because that this they printed a lot of it and it's getting broken. Like because people are clamoring for this card. I have a couple subtopics under this too to get into, but I I do want to say too, like when the card first came out, it was selling for more than Connor McDavid's rookie and Alexander Ovechkin's like. Come on, but that's like, that's the so world we live in. That is the world we live in. Yeah, <laughs> how Justin Her- Justin Herbert r- rookies were selling for more than Patrick Mahomes and and yeah. Josh Allen and Tom Brady. I mean, it's it sadly it is the world we live in. The one of the points I want to make is even though his rookie card is dropping in price, the price of the boxes are not dropping at all. They're still solidly over $300 a box for those, maybe even going up a little bit. So again, one of the weird things in the hobby, there is a clear chase card. Everybody's trying to get out of that. You get one, maybe two out of a case. That card has lost half its value in five days time. But the box that it comes out of is still holding strong and maybe even increasing a little bit in value. I think that case is like three thousand dollars, right? Isn't that something like that? Like it's they're, some, some, they're a little three hundred dollars a box right now, yeah. So right, but I, I, think, I think a case though is like maybe I think ten thousand for a case. No, ten ten boxes per oh, case. I thought, for some reason, I think it's like twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. It's twenty boxes per per case. No, like it that, can't but, be twenty. Uh, no. Okay. Maybe, maybe well, it's those for, yeah. I mean, they're over 300 a box. So clearly they wouldn't be, you know, 20 right. box okay. case. So, okay. Anyway, but, uh, anyhow, I, f- I feel like the, I feel like I heard somebody say that like the cases were like $3,000, something like that. And so, like, you're lo- hoping to get one, maybe two of these cards that are now selling for $500 a piece. So you're going to paying for a, for a third of your case for the actually most sought after card in the entire product. Like, you wonder if, like, you can probably get all the other young guns for a dollar a piece because everybody's chasing these, these, uh, the the guard cards, so I feel like that it just it's out it's outrageous to me the the, the pricing it seems outrageous. Well, yeah. I mean everyone's kind of hoping that they get. I don't know what the subsets are. I you know I I don't know if there's autos. I suspect there's autos. I suspect there's numbered cards. So people are chasing not just the base card. I right, would suspect. Canvas, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know enough about the product to to say otherwise. But I assume there are other chases in that product other than the base cards, but your floor is really, really low. Like the ceiling may be high, but the floor is really, really low because again, just getting the base card isn't far from a guarantee. I just watched um, Luke Box uh, open up a box of Prism during, I think it was Luca's rookie year. Didn't even get a base Luca rookie. It was $2,000 for the box of cards. I God, I loved it. He got like $100 in value. It was hilarious. But anyway, um, but, but like... That's what we do. It's the whole family guy. Well, there could be a, a boat in that box. Well, why not just take the boat? Well, there could be a boat in that box, though. Like, so a lot of people kind of have that mentality, and it's ridiculous. It's like people who were buying boxes of playoff contenders from 2000 hoping to pull a Tom Brady rookie. The box was cost more than the, the rookie card did, and you're not going to get a Brady out of it. Like, what, what are you doing? So, yeah, it's, it's kind of par for the course for the hobby which come on people, you know, hopefully the people who just want to collect this are doing what you're doing or saying uh, they should do. And, you know, maybe picking up those young gun cards that you want for a dollar or two and, and just wait until the fever calms down a little bit. I, I feel bad for real hockey collectors though, who just want to open up a box of the flagship upper deck product. And they're not going to for a while because these boxes are holding value. Well, and that, you know, fits, 
perfectly into my next sub question. There has been a lot of talk, like people being mad that the dealers are charging this much money for the boxes of that stuff. And, you know, they're making a lot of money on it. On the other hand, the last couple of years of the hockey product have been really bad and they haven't really had a hot product. So there there's kind of that, you know, back and forth with, yeah, they're making a lot of money on it and they're charging way more than they paid for it, but that's the market for the card right now. And they weren't able to do this on other products. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is, is there anything wrong with a card shop selling these for $300 a box if they paid way less for it? I don't think so. I, I'll, I'll answer while you be, no. he looked like he was really thinking. Oh, no, no. I was waiting for, you, was waiting for you to talk. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't think there is because that's a really good point, Mike. Like, how many years were they buying boxes of upper deck hockey for like $75 a box and selling them for $80? You know, like the margins are thin. You were a card shop owner, so I'm mm -hmm. more interested to hear what, what you have to say about this. But like, get, get what you can while you can because guess what? Next year, there's not a – Connor Bedard coming out, right? I don't think so. Again, no. <laughs> don't know enough about hockey, but I assume that there's not a generational type player coming out. So sure, get what you can now. And then next year, hey, you're going to have to start eating a lot of product because you're not going to be getting $300 a box. You're probably going to get close to what you paid for it. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head right there, Joe. I mean, Bedard, like a lot of people are saying Bedard is like the next like Gretzky slash Crosby type of player, like this player who is just going to change the hockey and be an all time one of the all time greats. Uh, you know, I'm 18 years old, so like we can't say that right now for for sure. But a lot of people are thinking that. And um, I, one of the I heard somebody was, was conver conversation on their podcast where they were saying about how if I'm able to sell these cards for three dollars, but then the shop down the street sells it for two dollars, but I'm able to sell all of mine for three dollars because the people come in and buy them. I don't need to change my price to $2 because I'm selling them for, mm -hmm. for three. Like if that's what the going price is, like card shop is allowed to sell it at that price. Like that is what people are willing to pay. And the people, people are, are willing to pay. Absolutely. Yeah, people mm -hmm. are willing to, willing to pay. So like you can't blame a card shop for making their money. And as both of you said, like the, the rookie classes the last couple of years, like you can get some really cool like boxes of like, like hockey metal for like really, really cheap compared mm -hmm. to everything else for the last couple of years, because the rookie classes haven't been that great. And this is like, I don't, again, it's all speculation, but the rookie class of all rookie classes of like this kind of generation, like the Connor McDavid level of, of, of a player. And like, you don't get that very often. So take advantage, like, let, let the shops take advantage of it. And if you really want to get a box, you're going to have to pay the price. Yeah. I mean, things are a lot different now than when I have my shop. So like, I, I'm not comparing apples to apples here, but like kind of in the same way, that's how it worked back when I had the shop, the hot products, I had to sell for more because I had so many other products that weren't hot that I was going to be lucky to be able to sell at any kind of a profit that like you need to have liquidity and you need to have money coming in. And the, the other part of it too is like, if I'm selling that for 175 a box, I'm going to have other dealers come in and buy it from me and take it and sell it for 300 <laughs> or people buy it and flip it on eBay. Like I, in this situation, if I had a quantity of that product, if I had good customers, I would give that to them for a lower price, but everybody else that came in my shop would be paying market price for it. So like that way, if you like you guys, like I would have given it to you for cheaper than I would have sold it to other people for, but like just some nobody that's coming in there that I don't know if they're a dealer. I don't know if they're going to a flea market or a card show or whatever to like, I'm not going to just sell it to them for $175 a box when I know they can go out and sell it for three or three twenty five. So like, I, I do understand they, they need to make money on some products. Like sounds crazy, but not everybody buys direct from panini and like has been able to you know make tons of money like like john at the card shop in montandon like he gets his cards from the comic distributor and they don't charge like a big upcharge but he only gets so many so like you know he's not a guy who made tons of money from wax because he bought it from panini for 200 dollars a box and where he was able to sell it for 1500 like 
some other place to do. So I have no problem with the dealer selling it for market price. If that's what it's going for, that's what it's going for. That's how the economy works. <laughs> that is how it works. If, if you want a capital capitalist society, you kind of have to deal with capitalist tendencies. Um, and let's put it in perspective here. $300 a box, people buying football and basketball would kill <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. to be getting one of the best yeah. products out there in that specific sport. I can buy three of those for the best when I buy yeah. for yeah. Right. Right. Prism. Right. What know? were we just talking about? NBA Prism losing uh, losing the uh, sticker autos and charging $900 to $1,000 to $1,200 for a box? Yeah. $300 is nothing, you know? <laughs> I agree. Um, you know, we did talk about the prices of the box holding steady, but one of the reasons you talked about it, Joe, well, was in the box, though. So, uh, it could be that million dollar bounty that's being offered by Dave and Adam's card world for the the Connor Bedard one of one. What is it? It is the Outburst Gold, is that what it's called? I believe. Uh, yes, yes. I Outburst believe so, Gold, yeah. Young yeah. Guns. Outburst yeah. Gold, Young Guns, one of one. Million dollar bounty. Like, things are getting a little out of hand, right? It's a little <laughs> crazy. Uh, million dollar bounty. Ish. Maybe. <laughs> so I was texting with you guys because I noticed this because I have a couple of pre-orders with David Adams. I just want to see what the current price was, see if I could save any money on the pre-orders I have coming in the next uh, couple months. And I noticed it's right splashed across their front page, Million Dollar Bounty, with a little proviso. The card must be in nice condition. No obvious damage like dents, stings, creases, or scrapes. Okay, that's that's fine. That's reasonable. I get that. The card should look like it would grade a nine. Cards coming out of packs generally shouldn't look like they should grade a nine. I mean, eight, right? eight, eight is kind eight of is the, the, yeah. the benchmark. Eight. Also, who's grading it? That could play a factor in this as well. Who's like, deciding this? And... Who's deciding what's a yeah. nine? So, yeah, I mean. Does it have to come back in nine before does it have pay to, you? Right. Will it be right. graded? Are they setting it off to be graded? And if it doesn't come back in nine, they're not giving you a million. Like, I'd love to see some of the, the more legalese proviso of that. David Adams doing what David Adams does. They're offering these million-dollar bounties. I wonder how many. I'd love to know how many they've actually made good on. Not saying that they renege on it or anything, but more saying have how many people have gone to David Adams and say, I got this card. Give me a million dollars. I you always hear know, about the bounty, but we never hear about somebody exactly. claiming the bounty. Rarely, rarely hear about it. Yeah. Not yeah. saying that yeah. they don't, but you don't hear about it. You right. kind of think you would, right? Right. right. But David that's Adams how publicized that. You think that would make coming? a big deal out of it. Yeah. all yeah. over their media. But you make a really good point, Mike, about the boxes. And I knew this was a topic, and I didn't even think about it. This was not intentionally not putting the cart in front of the horse. I just totally forgot about it. But yeah, that's I expected a, you to actually. Right? So good You're job. Welcome. But uh, yeah, I mean that's a really really good point about the the bounty still going after that one on one. It's not just about the base cards. That's not what's keeping those prices high. Beyond just the one on one, though, I think in the greater scheme of things, there are more than just mm, yeah. the one on one to to search for. Uh, again, like this, uh, Dave and Adams, like the, uh, essentially they are a, a card shop. They're on a much larger scale than your local card shop, but I feel, I don't, I don't um, begrudge them. And I, I think to myself, I even texted, I, I, um, I think I texted you guys and I said, like, do you think they may have already made a million dollars on presales? Like, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they've already made that amount of money on presales and they were expecting to make more when they release this bounty for people that are, are wanting to get on the, on the bounty. So, I mean, like they probably made a ton of money already on this product. And so a million dollars, I don't want to say it's a drop in the bucket because that's a, that's a lot of money. It's a lot and of they're not the And they're not the end user either. I mean, they'll pay a million dollars for that card. Who knows what and they're going to oh, do with it? Like right, they'll put, yeah. maybe they'll put it at Heritage. And even if they break even, the, the hype of it drove up their sales right. to get product right. out the door. So, I mean, sure, we can lose a little money on the one-on-one if it doesn't go to auction for over a million dollars. But at the end of the day, it's all the hype of trying to, to boost the sales up. And again, we don't know how many of those one on ones they've actually made good on paying off. So it's yeah. just, I'll, hey, I'll offer a million dollars to everyone. If you so, buy, if if you buy my cards back here, and it gets, pull, you know, like I, I don't know, it's just, it's a fake promise. If you Sorry, if you pulled this card, would you? go to Dave and Adams with the whole it has to be a PSA 9 thing or would you just 
send it to PSA, get it authenticated. I mean, if it looked perfect, maybe send it. Like, would you take the the million dollars or would you grade it and sell it yourself? I, 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 would, dr I would drive to David Adams tomorrow. <laughs> I would drive to David Adams tomorrow. Give me that million dollars and try to get that million dollars right, right then and there. Like, give me luck that in right now. I, I would be okay with that. I, I, I so if I randomly pulled this card, I would call David Adams and say, "What's the process for this nine stuff? I, I need to hear what hoop I need to go through because if it's like, okay, well, we're going to set it off and then we're going to do this and we're going to do that and there's like fifty steps between me and getting money, I'm going to call the auction house and say, who you. I forget what card it was, Mike, but you suggested this for one of the cards, one of the one of ones. Hey, who wants to put this on their auction house? Who wants to make this a premier mm -hmm. auction? Who wants to have this on their social media? I don't want to be charged hardly anything in fees. Who's going to give me the best deal? This is going to be huge PR for, for your auction house. And then just go from there. And I would put it up for auction. Depending on, again, the provisos yeah. and the legal yeah, needs of Dave Adams. The saying. stipulations, like, Saying it should be like a PSA nine, I feel like I don't know. That would make it less of a I'm driving right up to Dave and Adams because you're not getting the money right away anyway. They might say, eh, well, like if they really looks want like the an card, eight and a half to me. I'll get it, I'll send it in, I'll I'll get it just graded authentic, and I'll say, Here it is. If you can take a look at it, if you want it, go get it. So I don't yeah. I mean, let's at the end of the day, if you pull that card. You're going to make a lot of money off it. So, <laughs> yeah, that's you know. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, one of the things I saw about this card, uh, it was going around Twitter, and a lot of people were having a discussion about this. There was a customer at a card shop who pulled the Connor Bedard Young Guns out of a box of Upper Deck Hockey. And the LCS owner offered them another box, one of the Upper Deck Hockey, for the card the person accepted the trade and then the dealer put the card in his case for a thousand dollars a lot of people were mad at the dealer a lot of people said the buyer was an idiot i'm kind of of the thought that it's a little of both in this situation or a lot of both <laughs> yes. in this situation yes. right like doesn't really have to be one or the other right like the dealer, I mean, I was a dealer. I know what that card's worth. Clearly, okay, start with the buyer. If you get that card and you don't realize that's the card you're trying to get, why are you buying it? Like, are you doing some why are you buying box? it? <laughs> you know it's hot and you know there's something in there. And I guess you knew that you got it, but you had no idea what it might be worth. And so, like, you got the one thing that you were buying the product to get. But there could be a Connor Bedard in that there other box. There could be another Mike. one. Yeah, the million dollar one could be in there. But so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yes, the buyer should, like, he decided to do it. Nobody made him do it. So that's his own fault. The dealer got a heck of a deal on it and knew what he was doing and knew what he was going to charge for it and didn't really pay a lot for it. So he knew it. Like, they're both wrong to me, right? Yes, 100%. I, I completely agree with you. I will say this about the dealer. What makes him a little bit more wrong in my mind is if you're going to do that, just sell it on eBay, man. Like, like, don't put it in your case right in front of the guy. I don't know <laughs> if he did it legitimately right in front of the guy, but that's – you probably just lost a customer regardless of what else had ha transpired on social media or whatever. Like, and Yeah, but you, you got a $1,000 card. But you got a $1,000 card, right. <laughs> I, I, get, I get that, but it's just like – I don't know. There's there's a point where it's like that's just kind of a skeezy thing to do, and that's the short like term that. mentality of a lot of people in this hobby that sell cards. Yeah. They don't look at the big picture. They don't see value in a customer mm -hmm. who will keep coming back and buying from them. And buying and just three hundred dollar oh, box of hockey make, cards. Yeah, <laughs> I could make money off this, and like make like that's yeah, all they that's, care about. It's like that making the money on the one deal is all yep. they care about. Yep, the quick the quick uh seven hundred dollar profit he made yeah. or whatever it was, that that's all that mattered to him. And and that for me tilts the scale a little bit towards I, I think the dealer's more of a D-bag in this situation. But again, how many times have, have we said, and I know I've specifically said, you have to be a vigilant collector. Like mm -hmm. you have to be a smart collector. 
you're right, Mike. He's opening up that box of cards to get that card. How do you not know? Let's just say it's a random hockey collector. And he goes into the shop and goes, boy, last year's hockey, upper deck hockey, was only like $50 a box. This is $300. Oh, there's Connor Bedard. Okay. Oh, he's really hot. I'll buy a box. And you pull the Connor Bedard. You don't check eBay? Like, I'm yeah. just saying. Like, I, I just, it takes us, I mean, if it was a kid, that's bad. If it was an adult person with full mental capacity, <laughs> I, you're stop being so stupid. Stop. You're a mark at that point. You're yeah, the mark they, at the card table. <laughs> there are there are a lot of uh, multiple bad bad things here, of course. So I, I agree 100% on, on all this. Um, my, my, one of my thoughts, I agree with you guys hundred percent. One of my thoughts might be, uh, this was all, this all played out on Twitter. We don't know how the conversation went. We don't know if the person said, Hey, can I trade this? (laughs) Can I trade this for another box? And then maybe they portrayed it as, Oh, I traded this for a box of cards. Maybe they went, maybe they said, can I trade this for another box? And then got got the other box. And I mean, the dealer probably should say, you know, it's worth more than that. Like a a, a good dealer would say, Hey, it's worth more than that. A good dealer would say, "Hey, it's worth more than that. We, you know, we, you know, we want you to look it up, or, or you know, EP would do that. Boxes. That's EP what EP would absolutely do. <laughs> do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but again, like I and I, I agree 100 percent that like if you're going in there and you're spending 300 dollars on a box of hockey, it means you have at least a somewhat of a little bit of an interest in hockey. You mean to tell me that you don't? Maybe. know? Kind of, <laughs> not necessarily. Like, you think? Or maybe like, he had 300. I think there are a lot of people. Cards. Upper deck series two, like I like think there's a lot of people buying two. upper deck series two hockey that are not hockey card buyers, but they're trying to get Connor Bedard cards out of it. That, Which then, then makes it even then you worse. Know what though, at that point, right? Yeah, but then you should yeah, know yeah, what absolutely. it is and what you have something that's worth more than just another one more box. Like I don't. Th- I'm, I'm just shocked <laughs> I'm leaning, about I'm the fact more... that you're saying what I read on Twitter. There could be like nuance to it, and maybe <laughs> like it's not exactly like one mm. side portrayed it. Yeah, I feel like, like I feel like that's pro- probably like 50 50 chance that that's probably what happened. Like, like 50 50 50 50 chance that we didn't get the whole story, at least a 50 50 chance that we didn't get the whole and, story. And wait, wait, wait. I, I, wait, I don't know when their next video drops, but I guarantee you, Sports Card Radio. We'll call this this dealer out, this card shop owner, and say he's the worst thing that's happening. They in the probably hobby should have last fall. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, they they might have before knows, that. But, yeah, I haven't watched. But, like, but yeah, you. That's a really great point, EP. About you really don't know what actually happened. Those two people know. Maybe if anyone else was in the shop, yeah. <laughs> It is Twitter. Twitter. It's 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 basically it's. I mean, it's as good of a source for, as Wikipedia. Why yeah. why would we not just totally? For, for all we know, this might not even happen. Period. <laughs> so we just <laughs> on Twitter. Not, it's you know gotta I mean? be Possibly. true. <laughs> That's awesome. Fair. True. First off, Twitter. I don't think it's Twitter. Not on that. Man, I'm <laughs> not calling it X. Nope. It, as long as I can type in Twitter.com and it goes there, right. Exactly. It's still Twitter. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Well, moving on a little bit. One dealer that didn't trade a box of cards for a key rookie that was pulled is NorCal Sports Cards. They pulled the Victor Wembanyama Prism Black One of One. Not only that, they did a vi- they did a video on YouTube, and I watched it today, and it only had like thirty five hundred views, which kind of blows me my mind that. Like it didn't have like 30,000 views, right. but because they took it to PSA. So the video was them taking the card to PSA and waiting for the grade. And the grade came back at PSA 10. It was a little off center. So I don't know, but still it's a 10. It says a 10. Was it off center? Hogan one one though. No, no. Yeah. It was nowhere <laughs> near that bad, but I mean, there's talk that this is a million dollar card. A million dollars. Who pulled it? Nor not NorCal cardboard. NorCal. I was gonna say, does he just <laughs> yeah. won some pro bowls from me? <laughs> and if he just got that, I expect to taste that mil- million dollars. I'll tell you what. I looked. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't that's, know. That's really familiar. <laughs> I knew there might be some confusion with that when I saw that one, but no. NorCal sports cards, okay. which I, I did watch the video because, like, I like like that it it is kind of cool like i can't imagine being in that position sitting there at psa waiting for that grade to come back and then comes back at 10 like wow what a feeling that must have been for them like yeah 
not yeah. not the playground I play in, but still, <laughs> like I, and, I can be happy for somebody that has that happen to them. And and we've talked about this before. Like I'm not a huge proponent of grading a one of one. Like to me, it doesn't mm-hmm. make a ton of sense. The only time it does when it gets a 10 mm-hmm. like that card could have gotten any other grade. And I don't think the value changes at all. If it's a raw card, if it's a seven an eight a nine, I think it would have probably sold for around the same. Once it hits that 10 though, it is a whole different stratosphere in terms of value. A million dollars is ridiculous though. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, for a hot it is. I, I sent you guys a, a pick uh, this afternoon of, I'm sorry, yesterday, Sunday, I sent you guys a pick of um mac jones the news that he was getting traded to the jaguars and then the mac jones 101 just happened to be in in my feed as well when that sold for wasn't it a million dollars the black finite 101 i think it was a hundred thousand yeah i don't think it was was a hundred okay okay maybe okay on that scale it kind of feels like the same (laughs) same to me you know like Wemby is supposed to be like like change the game kind of player mac jones never no one ever believed he was but but still like Some this is gonna did. be yeah i guess someone's gonna be holding the bag on this million dollar card <laughs> right I, I whenever i see a card like this go for a million dollars my first thought is how many playoff contender tom brady rookie card autos could i get like it just <laughs> seems like such a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a player who's i guess he's been fine i don't think he's been anything out Outrageously, he's, he's, he's been he's really good. good. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's really is, good. Is he? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Okay. He, he, the Spurs gonna, much better the Spurs than Mac Jones. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Spurs going to make the playoffs? I'm not sure where they stand. So. Where they're on the standings? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Like, but, I, I don't know. I just it seems like a lot of money for a first year player who I'm sure if Zion had a black 101 PSA 10, it probably would have sold for a million dollars back then too. It's a lot of money for any card, right? Like it's like that is a ridiculous yeah. amount of money to to pay for a card. And like you said, Joe, like the 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 issue the issue is with this kind of card, like this, there, there's no way this is going to increase in value. Like the ma- amount of the amount of what he would have to do for this card to increase in value from now, if it sells for a million dollars, is just astronomical. He has to like break LeBron's scoring record and win multiple championships and multiple MVPs. And like as much as you you know you want to say that he might be the next great player, like you can't put all that on him now and then think 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 that it's going to go up in price. Like that's just it's crazy. There's just no way it's that the uh, Justin Herbert conundrum that we talk about every right. week here, right? Right. Just amp, amped up. Yeah, I mean uh, completely yeah. I'm amped up because of the hype, right? And the hype is like Super big too. After you have a couple years of rookie classes where there weren't anybody yeah. that people wanted to collect, mm-hmm. and you know, look at Connor Bedard, the same situation, and Wambam Yama is pretty much the same. Like great talents, maybe generational talents, but also coming off of a dry spell of a couple of years where people really wanted to chase rookies, but there was nobody really to chase. Oh, come and, on. LaMelo Ball is going to be the well, next I mean, Jordan, the, right? The, the thing is, like, <laughs> Tyrus Max is a great yeah. player. Tyrus Halliburton is a great player. Like, there, there were a handful of rookies in those, those those years, but there's nobody, there hasn't been anybody like Wembenyama, though, right? Like, that's the deal. Like, he, there hasn't been anybody like him, I don't want to say since, I, I can't. When, I was going to say, since LeBron? Like, I was gonna I mean, say Le- I was gonna say LeBron, but that, that probably feels like there's, I, I'm just talking about hype, though, but, not right, right, not like right. actual co- right. Tra- career trajectory, but like right. just the hype Co- of that. And maybe Kobe, class. Kobe before him, like, but yeah, like, right. this feels like that kind of kind of player, yeah. Because Luca yeah. wasn't like that hyped, right? He wasn't no, no. Wemby hyped. No, he just he's just playing out of his mind. He's just a really yeah. good, really yeah. good player. Yeah, he became hyped because he was playing well. It wasn't right. like right. he wasn't pre hyped. He did, Would he's you like, rather have this Wemby one of one or that seven hundred fifty thousand dollar Luca that we got to see on that terrible documentary? Which one? Isn't, would, which one makes isn't more sense? The is the Prism Luca one of one still hasn't been pulled. Has yeah, I think it? no. I, I think, yeah. I think that's there, yeah. one that's still out there. Yeah. So would you that, rather have this or the the one of one black Prism that wasn't pulled of Luca from twenty nineteen? <sighs> Like Luca, needs I wouldn't want like I wouldn't have any of them for more than thirty seconds. <laughs> They'd be sold. What are we this talking about here? This is hypothetical. It's a hypothetical dude. situation. This is, hypothetical. <laughs> this is you know alternate universe where Joe Day is it's a, a basketball mega collector, <laughs> and, and you know you're a billion dollar yacht. Yeah. You know. <laughs> like then, what would you rather have? The Luca. <laughs> I, I don't know. Say the Luca. 
it's a cool well, picture. I don't know. Like look, look at him. He's to win a title. He's to win like his MVPs, that sort of stuff. But, I mean, like he had like I think like four or five triple doubles in a row this week. Like he is an outstanding, like an amazing player. If you've ever seen him like pass and the, just the way he plays is like incredible. He's very very effortless how he plays basketball. So I really hope that he gets the championships and the MVPs and that sort of stuff. But I mean. Like if I had to choose one, it probably would be the Luca, just because of what he's already done in the NBA and what he's shown that he can do in the NBA. Where wembenyama has been great, but like Luca's done it for a few years now, so I think the I think the Luca. Okay. Mike, what about you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just asking <laughs> questions. I don't know. Uh, boy, well, I'll, I'll take the Wembenyama because both of you picked the Luca. He's <laughs> yeah. a all right. He's a different kind of cat. He could like his skill set is completely different for a guy his size than anybody has ever had. So if yeah. he blossoms into the player and can stay healthy, like I feel like he could be more special than even Luca is. Dude, dude should eat more pasta or something. His I was gonna say, arms and legs cheeseburgers. <laughs> are so thin that I'm just waiting for one to just break anytime. Dude probably does eat all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which he needs yeah, to Cheese I remember, burgers with you know, you were you remember stuff on Marbury, right? DP. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I remember name. seeing a show on him one time and showing how much he had to eat. Like his mom made him like like meals like five times a day or something. He ate like five over five thousand calories a day That's just crazy. to maintain his weight because of playing basketball mm. so like imagine being one of yaba's size like like how much than he has to eat. <laughs> yeah like <laughs> just to stay looking skinny like i, I can't imagine like he probably has to Same. eat all day i know <laughs> joe i eat all day just to maintain this i know <laughs> <laughs> for our for our audio for our audio right. subscribers you're really missing out on a whole right, right now especially with those horizontal stripes <laughs> those horizontal stripes never a good idea i just pulled it out of the closet and put it on tell, uh. tell the tell the viewers and listeners joe what, what did you have to eat the last two days oh Love two days in a row popeyes popeyes, <laughs> popeyes. <laughs> there we go it's uh. legit Oh well, all deep fried and <laughs> buttermilk biscuit, baby. Wow, <laughs> and some ranch dipping sauce. <laughs> fantastic. Well, you know, one other player that I think is super special in basketball is Caitlin Clark, and Panini did something brilliant this week. Again, they signed her to an exclusive autograph deal. She is now Panini exclusive. They, I think Tops only has until April 1st to be able to make any more cards of her. They already did a Panini instant drop of her, which I bought some of base. I tried to get the out of five, but there was just no chance. Like they sold out instantly. And um, they're going to do an exclusive set of hers. They have that in the can, but you know, with Panini having the WNBA license with her breaking all these records and declaring for the WNBA draft, WNBA cars are going to be huge next yes, year. And Panini is going to have her all over it. And rightfully so they should like no offense to anybody else, but if you have, that player that are going to bring eyeballs to your product and have people buying things. She is the one to get it done. And like, I think this is fantastic. I think she's a fantastic player and, and this is great for Panini. Like I'm the one that's been saying Panini is just going to fold up and go away, but apparently not. They signed her to a multi-year deal. The first ever female athlete they've signed to a multi-year deal. And you know, what, I don't even want to say, what do you think? Like, how huge will this be for WNBA cards? It's, go it's going to be huge. I will say, you don't have to say, like, no offense to any of the other players in the set or anything like that, because this is not just a WNBA thing. How We just talked about upper deck hockey. There's one player that any of us really know. Yeah. Uh, basketball, True. there's Wemby. How many other rookies do we legitimately know coming out of that set? Yes, basketball fans who are buying boxes of it. Don't flame us. We get yeah, there it. There are people out there, there that are, know better than there, we do. Right. <laughs> but even, even football, when you have a massive quarterback come out, 
and everyone else. So, I mean, I don't think it's offensive to say she's going to drive this product and she absolutely should. I'm curious and it's going to be huge. So I don't even think that needs to be said. I'm curious how Panini has the WNBA license. And I only say that because the WNBA is owned, right? And funded by the NBA with the NBA going to tops. I'm kind of surprised that they're two separate. Maybe it's like the TKO thing with WWE and UFC. I'm guessing it's two different (laughs) arms, but I'm kind of surprised that the NBA went over to fanatics, but they didn't bring the WNBA with them since they are the the funder of that, of that league. So, but yes, this clearly though, that was fanatics not wanting that. That must be what it is. I mean, you have to make that assumption that they didn't like, they are licensed independently of each other. So if fanatics, would have went in at the time and said we want the nba and wnba and the they would have had both have so they yeah. they probably just didn't make an offer <laughs> now they're it, thinking so. that's yeah that's shit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that was a bad call <laughs> yeah that's so so on your side on their part right like if you're like if you're we'll blaming on all, josh like, luber right <laughs> sure I have how, no how would idea. you not want he was going to do I, a zero cool set of <laughs> caitlin clark it would have been awesome everyone what, like i don't understand how you would not want like you have to know that, that caitlin clark's gonna be coming out you, I, we we've been we've known since she was a freshman that she was this kind of player right so i mean like i feel mm-hmm. like not I, i'm not so we wonder how long ago the the deal for the nba that sort of stuff i don't remember exactly when that was signed That's been, when, when, what when over that, two when that years started. now mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, so. I, I feel like you know maybe that was part of it but still to, to give that up now and like i i also wanted to comment that i feel like it's, it's crazy that we have Wembenyama, Bedard, and then Caitlin Clark coming out. Like we got these these like potentially sport changing athletes all coming out at the same time. It's a really cool time to to be a collector. But uh, yeah, and, no, sorry, it's a really original. good time to be an investor right now. <laughs> you can be a collector when the prices That's drop, not. and you can actually buy the cards if you're a collector. We, we don't That's... say we don't we don't say investor or asset class on this podcast. I'm sorry. Yes, we, we do don't. say investor in <laughs> derision. Like, I'm not a fan of it. I'm just saying these WNBA cards, when Caitlin Clark has, like, legit rookies, are going to be super expensive to buy. Mm-hmm. They just yeah. are. Like, That's we saw problem. her Super Fractor one of one sold out of the Bowman U sold for $72,000. Right. What will her black one of one out of Prism sell for? I mean, that's clearly got to be, like, a two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. I was just gonna say two hundred fifty thousand. Right? I was yeah. gonna say two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that's the point, EP, and that's why I say if you're an investor, this is a great time because you can buy a boxes, you can get these players, you can sell their stuff, you can make money. If you're a true collector of WNBA product, and I'm sure there are people out there who were collecting WNBA, just like there were people collecting hockey before Connor Bedard. You're not going to be able to get this product for a while. If you're going you to have to pay a thousand dollars. You're going to have to pay because it's oh. it's Panini. Yeah. Would it shock you? Oh if it's boy, a thousand five hundred dollars. Oh, no, it's going to be a thousand. It, it, it'll be yeah. I, I think it'll be nine hundred or a thousand. It could I do. be absolutely. It, it shouldn't be. On what kind of parallels yeah. and what kind of autographs and all that kind of stuff in it? Well, you know they're going to use Prism. They're going they're going to use their flagship brand oh, they're that, gonna right? have like prism oh, yeah they're gonna yeah. have they might have national treasures for all we know and it's all gonna be caitlin <laughs> clark cards i mean who who knows again no offense to any of the other players but they're really gonna lean hard into her as they should well hopefully wonder- her coming into the league though will get eyeballs on the league and then people will go right. oh well you know what there are other women here that are really good too look like right it, it and the history have of to be all WNBA, her. like the the swoops of the world who were yeah. playing nba well before caitlin clark i mean have them in this product as well and autographs and stuff i, I mean i think it's going to be a fun product but if you are a true wnba fan hold on because it's going <laughs> to be expensive it's going to be an entirely yeah. different ride oh. yeah it is. yeah well i mean I'm actually excited about that. I'm not a huge basketball fan. I do love Caitlin Clark. I love the way she plays. I had a bunch of her cards out of the Bowman U, which I actually got pretty lucky in what I had out of that. So, yeah, that she's selling that product too. Like Wamba Miyama is in it too, but he's a short print, so you don't get many of him. But I looked at like the hobby boxes of the basketball, and they're like close to $300 a box. Hmm. 
Yeah, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll get another one. No, I'm not gonna get. Another. Remember when she pulled her own card? Mm. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> I do. That's great. <laughs> Good call, call back. back there. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do wonder, for as excited as I am for the WNBA cards, like I feel like she's the kind of player who. We're going to always remember her as the Iowa Caitlin Clark. So I wonder if her, like her Bowman U cards and the, even the Panini, um, the Panini, like the instant ones that just came out, like there, there's going to be a lot of, I think those will hold more value than a lot of other cards for other, other players like Caleb Williams, and those guys who have have cards in their college uniforms. I feel like a lot of people because of March Madness and because of her, her run at, at Iowa, I feel, wonder if maybe her cards in the Iowa uniform are going to hold more value than a lot of other, um, a lot of other players that, that have moved from college to pros. That's actually, that's a really interesting point because it is true. And, and more people, I would not be surprised again. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's fact, but I know it's true. More people probably watch <laughs> the it's out. It's playing after the podcast. Um, <laughs> it's the end. More people watch the NCAA tournament for the women. I bet mm-hmm. than watch the WNBA. I don't know if for a fact, but I know it's true. Right. So like, I could totally see people who are just women's college basketball fans propping up cards in her in her Iowa Hawkeyes uniform. That being said, people are going to buy whatever she's in, and what she's going to be in is going to be in her WNBA uniform. But to keep that product hot and to keep her card values up, people need to start watching the NBA. There needs to be – it can't just be going from – you know, someone pulls one of her big cards and goes from investor to investor to investor. There needs to be a collector at the end of that train. Hopefully there actually is. Hopefully enough people start watching the WNBA to make it a collector actually wants the cards. Well, that'll be interesting. Let's buy a box. Want to buy a box, EP? Case? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's a case? see a case. Case, yeah. no. Case is going to be so expensive. Well, not with that attitude. Enough. You've got a stack sale, man. Clean yeah. up. It is stack sale. Save not, that, that money. Not put that in, 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 in an account. And we'll, <laughs> hoodies. Hoodies. Yeah. And then splitsies on a case. Boom. Handled. <laughs> All right. Handled. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys. I think that was a pretty good chat this week. I don't have anything else. Anybody else? Anybody? I, I do have one thing. We just did a whole podcast talking about hockey and basketball. What am I even doing here? Guys, I could have taken the week off. This is this is not my realm. <laughs> Joe, we called I had to be here the for the expert. giveaway. You had to be here. I had to be here yeah. for the giveaway. Okay. I thought you were an expert, so that's why I had you. <laughs> I would have replaced you if I knew that you didn't know anything. But other than that, I'll see you next week. Take care, guys. See you, boys. Adios.